A few years ago, I was actually on a plane on my way to a conference of Fortune 500 executives, and my role was really there to speak to them about improving their corporate sustainability. So I knew that I needed to open with a powerful story, but I had nothing. I had absolutely nothing. And so I was sitting at my hotel thinking about it, and I got up in the morning, and on the way to the conference center, it occurred to me I had a great story. And here's what I said. When my son was 15 years old, eight years ago, and he was on a high school cross-country running team, he needed new shoes, so I took him to one of those shoe stores in Duluth, Minnesota, where we lived, and he was taking off a pair of shoes that didn't fit or he didn't like, and I held up a national brand and said, hey, Eric, how about these? And he said, I can't wear those, Dad. And I said, why not? And he said, have you seen their corporate sustainability report? <laughs> I said, no, what's in it? And he said, that's my point, Dad. They don't have one. Oh. Wow. So I showed these Fortune 500 executives a number of apps that you might all be familiar with that, that can instantly tell you what a company's maybe spectrum, how they lie on the spectrum of sustainability, and maybe even a product you could scan or barcode scan. But really how this all started is about five years ago, I became a student of story after a lecture in Tokyo. And... Uh, I immersed myself in about a dozen texts on story, and then I listened to more than 1,000. And what I learned is that, really, story is the only tool that motivates us, that inspires us, that actually even challenges us to change the way we believe or think about something. It's the only tool. And so I really dove deep. And uh, maybe I'm just coming up now for air. But eventually, um, what I learned is that listening is the number one skill. And we all know that. We learn that as consultants, as professionals. We know we have to listen. We learn that very early in our careers. But you have to listen differently to really craft powerful story and logic models. You have to listen more often, but you also have to listen at the most unusual of times. And so this is what I did. I listened very carefully. And let me give you an example. About four and a half years ago, um, I was co-leading the buildings practice at Rocky Mountain Institute before joining Bauman Consulting today. And um, we were hired by an Australian evil mining company <laughs> to help them, yeah, help them with their workforce housing. And these mining companies, they build hundreds and hundreds of homes at a time, five or 500 or 1,000. And uh, this company's houses were using about seven times more energy per square foot than the typical Australian home. So we knew. This was a low energy, healthy housing design exercise. Who couldn't do this? And <laughs> of course we were wrong. Um, what we learned very quickly was you could probably save about $30 million in energy from 500 homes if we did about an 85% reduction. And mining energy is so much bigger than the housing energy of an entire town that reducing it doesn't matter. Corporate executives will not buy into this. This doesn't resonate. So we thought, what, what, what are we doing wrong here? So one night we're at a barbecue. We're at our client's house. We're sitting at a barbecue. And I over here and my colleagues over here, our clients say, you know, turnover is really high in the mining industry. In fact, the average sentence, as I call it, is about 27 months. So we thought, well, what if better housing designs by neighborhood? Because right now they put six-foot fences around every house. You don't want to talk to your neighbor or meet them. And we thought better community design focused on, um, you know, internally focused where people might meet their neighbor and do things together could change retention rates. And we used a 15 to 20 percent attribution, or not attribution rate, but um, increase four or five months and a small attribution rate across their portfolio. And it was hundreds of millions of dollars annually. But that's not the story. There were three more storylines I can't tell you about, but they were these fatigue and safety about peak town load affecting mining production, about reduced or eliminated infrastructure through these housing town developments. And ultimately, it was a $1.5 billion potential annual savings to the mining company. Now, that's a story you can take to the boardroom, not the energy story, not that interesting. So I want to leave you with this thought that I hope all of you are using story and logic modeling in your practice 
And I hope that you'll think hard about how you're crafting those story models. And I'd love to meet with any of you to talk about that. But I'd like to say, you know, don't just do something. Sit there and listen. Thank you for listening tonight.